Question number one, find the value of B. Now we're given here a right angled triangle and we, ha we have an unknown side which happens to be the shorter one. Okay, now what can we do in here? We can apply our Pythagoras theorem, correct? So first of all, five here, the one opposite to my right angled is my hypotenuse. And then let's try and write out my uh, Pythagoras theorem. So it's my two shorter sides squared added together equals my hypotenuse squared. So here we have it. Now the question is to find the value of B. Okay, so we want to move everything away from B as much as possible so that we're left with just B equals an answer. So, first thing to do, let's move my 4 squared onto the other side of the equal sign. Now, let's calculate down. We have 25 take 16. Now, what does that give us? That gives us 9. So, B squared equals 9. Now, B would be the square root of that. And now, square root of 9, we can change to 3 squared, or in other words, 3 times 3. And from here, we can cancel out my square root symbol. And we're left with just B equals 3. Okay? So, we just applied my Pythagoras theorem to this right angle triangle to find the unknown side. Okay? Now, let's move on. Question number 2. Find the value of C as a third. So, we have a very similar question here. Okay? So, first thing to do is let's write out my Pythagoras theorem again, okay, to this right angle triangle. Now, where's my hypotenuse? It's the one opposite to the right angle, which is 7 in this case. Now, let's try and write out our Pythagoras theorem. Okay, so we have c squared plus 4 squared equals 7 squared. And again, like last time, we want to get everything away from c as much as possible. So first thing to do is to move my 4 squared onto the other side. Okay, so like this. So from here, let's just calculate the numbers that we have. So we have 49 take away 16, which gives me 33. Now, c squared equals 33, and c must be the square root of 33. Okay, now if we go back to the question, it says find the value of c as a third. This is how we do it. Okay, so this is as a third. Okay, so I want you to leave the square root symbol, and that's how we answer this question. Okay, so it's a pretty straightforward question. So let's have a move on to the next one. Okay, question number three. Find the value of A correct to two decimal places. So again, very similar, but in this case, we want two decimal places. So we have our right angle triangle. Let's apply my Pythagoras theorem. So again, my hypotenuse is this one, and my Pythagoras theorem written is up here. So A squared equals six squared i uh, sorry, a squared plus 6 squared equals 7 squared, okay? Now, usual things, let's move everything away from a as much as possible, okay? Now, let's calculate what numbers we have. Okay, this equals 13. Okay, so that was a squared. Now, a will give me the square root of that, okay? Now, as opposed to the last question, we, wanna, uh, we want the answer correct to two decimal places, okay? So, square root of 13, I want you to put it into a calculator, okay? So, here's my calculator. Now, we have this long decimal number. We want it to two decimal places. Okay, so let's just have a look at these numbers here to see if we need to round up or if we need to round down. Okay, now the answer in this case is 3.61 approximately. Okay, this little squiggly line means approximately equal to. Okay, so 3.61 is the answer for question number three. Okay, now question four. Let's read it. Find x of a right angled triangle where we have the shorter side is x, the hypotenuse is 37, and the other side is 35. So we're given that the hypotenuse is 37, so that means my x and my 35 must be my other two shorter sides. So from here we can just apply my Pythagoras theorem like usual. So my two shorter sides squared added together will give me my hypotenuse squared, which is what we have here. So the question is to find x, so let's begin. Move everything away from x as much as possible. So first thing to do is move the 35 squared onto the other side of the equal sign. Now let's calculate the numbers we have. Okay, so I want you to use your calculator, and we get x squared is 144. So that was x squared. x must be the square root of 144. Okay, so the square root of 144, we can change to... 12 times 12, or in other words, the square root of 12 squared. Okay, so from here, 
we can just cancel it out and we're left with just x equals 12. Okay, so even though we're not given uh, a triangle, we're given the size of the triangle, so we can still apply uh, my Pythagoras theorem, okay? Because it's given to us that it, it is a right angled uh, triangle. Okay, now let's move on to question number five. So we have another similar question. Find x of a right angled triangle, and they've given our sides again. So my hypotenuse is 53, then these two must be my other two shorter sides. Okay, so let's try and write out my Pythagoras theorem. So here we have it, x squared plus 28 squared equals 53 squared. And by now, hopefully we know that we should move 28 squared onto the other side. Okay, now let's calculate these numbers. And we get 2,025. So this is x squared. So x must be the square root of 2,025. Okay, now 2,025, what can we do? We can change it into 45 squared. Okay, or 45 times 45. In, in this case, we can cancel out my square root sign like usual and we're simply left with just x equals 45 okay so that's the answer to this question okay so what we've done is just we've applied my Pythagoras theorem to find one of the shorter sides that is unknown